Hello, how's everyone doing today? In this video, we're going to be looking at the technical analysis, the short thesis regarding Redbox, and also the fundamentals, why I will share with you why they are at risk with bankruptcy. Now, I get it. I don't like people coming at me saying, oh, this investment's terrible. But as an investor, I hope that you can respect to see the other people's point of view and why they might think that you know this might not be a good investment so you can put it in your pocket so when you do put your hard-earned work money or your family's money, uh, you can kind of think of this video uh, and maybe it might help you be a better investor, okay? So with that stated, um, if you look at uh, Redbox, you know, on our top short squeeze stocks, it is showing up right now as top one. I mean, just look at it. It's right here. The proof is in the pudding. It's a top one short squeeze candidate, okay? If you go in and take a look at the data here that is just fresh, we're looking at a short float at around 61, a short in change at around 19.21, uh, and a days to cover to around minimal. And um, it's it's looking pretty good, and it's a high short squeeze score. Even gamma-wise, if you look at the gamma, it's showing up as top one as well. Now, give me one moment here, and let's let me look at it. Because for some reason, the market caps I don't agree with here in regards to what's showing. Uh, but uh, if we do switch gears, so from the short perspective – it's looking like it is uh, a short squeeze candidate and a gamma squeeze candidate. The problem that I have, and we'll get into it, is with its fundamentals. But if you go into Ortex and look at the data, you can see the days to cover ratio in on the one week, which is a very, it's a nice signal, as you can see, when you see a spike, it precedes a short squeeze, almost like the 10-year minus the two-year treasury, right? So... I uh, definitely uh, believe, though, since it's dropped off and tapered off, the short squeeze thesis may not come into fruition, and there may be some downturn for the red box stock, okay? And that's just purely just looking at the days to cover. Now, if we go into the FINRA short volume, we do see a spike and then a taper, and that signifies, uh, again, the failures to, sorry, the FINRA short volume that's been reported has gone down. Failures to deliver, not so significant as we can see on the most recent price action. And let me see what other things I personally like to look at. Yeah, so now the short sellers are in control. They're gaining. And let me just, yeah, so that that's about there for that one. Now, why do I think this company is dangerous and is and could be at risk of bankruptcy? Well, before I get into meat and gritty with the assets and whatnot, let's just talk about revenue. Now, when you invest in a company, you're not going to like if you're actually going to go buy a real company that you can physically see, like an ice cream shop, you would want to know how much ice cream they sell, right? You're just not going to buy it because there's going to be a thesis of a of, you know, the ice cream store is going to be the only one left in the valley or anything BS like that. You would want to look at the numbers. You kind of put on your smart hat and you start looking at the numbers. Well, when you buy a stock, you need to understand that you're buying a piece of a business. And that piece of a business is you are all a part of, if you purchase the Redbox stock, all 13 million shares here uh, from more Morningstar's reporting here. So 2018, they made a revenue of $1 billion. And again, revenue is not the bottom line, is basically the monies that come in into the business. Every time a consumer gives them money, it shows up as revenue. And as you can see, it's been going down. Revenue has been decreasing ever so slightly to a point where it's around $289 million. Now, I don't like a business that, to me, this looks like it's dying. But who knows? Maybe they're trying to fix something, their growth. They're, maybe they might translate into their net income. So I'm going to look at their gross margins. Their gross margins are going down as well. It, that's not good, right? And if you look at their operating margins, they're becoming negative. So all these are red flags and signals that this is a company that is not performing adequately, Okay, which is a reason why a lot of short sellers are shorting the stock. All right. So if you look up net income here, 
Um, it's uh, you see, they had a net income positive about $61 million in 2018. But as you can see now, they are at a negative 113 million. They're burning cash. Okay. And if you go look at the free cash flow, uh, they have just flipped from positive to negative. You know, 2018 was probably a fabulous year for the red box stock. It seems to me that it looked like it had a really good future. In fact, if you look up the stock, and let's just see, I, I don't even know 2018 numbers. Yeah. It's not, it must have just went public. I'm not too sure. Um, it's, uh, hmm. yeah, it was founded in 2002. And for it to have these types of revenues decreasing, I wish I would known what the prices were back of, then at 2018. But it seemed pretty promising here. But then I would be asking myself, if I was an investor of this company, is there a future for Redbox? Is there a future? Right now, we have a game. We have um, streaming. We have Disney Plus, Hulu. Even Netflix is starting to die off because of the competition. I mean, you kind of have to ask yourselves, guys. I mean. Is there a future for DVDs? I mean, are, are they still doing DVDs or is it some type of digital subscription? I mean, what's not to stop people from purchasing Disney Plus, which is producing amazing, amazing content, and also HBO Max? I mean, I'm yawning right now because this company is so boring. I don't see any excitement here. I just see a company that's on a risk of bankruptcy. And to know that, you look at the current ratio, it's below 1.5. And if you don't know what that means, that's why I have this figure here. Now, here are the short-term assets of Redbox. They have $65 million. They don't even have enough money to pay off their short-term liabilities, which is $124 million, meaning that this is debt that they owe in the next 12 months, approximately. What's interesting also is their short-term debt cannot pay off their long-term liabilities. Now, you might say, well, hey, look at their long-term assets. They have $313 million in long-term assets. Guys, these are illiquid. These are their little freaking boxes. If they sell that, then they don't have a business. So we need to go buy short-term assets. And if you start seeing a company selling this, uh, you need to get the hell out of this company. But what this is telling me, guys, is this is a dangerous company. And sometimes short sellers have it right. Okay, I'm going to make my face a little bigger. Sometimes, I'm going to say it now, short sellers may have the right opinion. Like I know I don't like Hindenburg with their whole Clover Health hit because I don't think Clover Health deserves it as it's growing really well. But I will tell you something. It's uh, what, what I do find interesting, and I do what I do agree with Hindenburg, was that Nikola company that was rolling down their SUV uh, saying that it works, right? And then them trying to sue Tesla because they copied them, oh, right? So sometimes short sellers have it right and it's in the best interest to look and understand and listen to people's investment thesis to a point, but make sure you use your own frontal lobe to kind of recreate what I'm saying. So if you do want to trade this, because um, there could be some volatility and also you know, for it to show up as top one uh, for the retail here, uh, for sorry, for the um, Gamma Squeeze as well as the uh, Red Box uh, um, for the short sh short squeeze here. I mean, yeah, it could possibly have a uh, connection to a short. But as you can see, though, here, it seems to me that it, the thesis is dying out. Now, this could go up again. We'll see. But right now, it doesn't seem like... Um, we are going to experience a rally. In fact, if we go here, oh shit. Let me let me uh, um, let me show you here what I was saying. So look at the days to cover here, guys. It's going down. Usually it's a good signal to precede the stock price movement. Likewise, if you look at here, um, looking at some technical analysis, we are right now overbought on the RSI, which then we had a a big reversal. Um, to the downside. We broke different levels of support here. Now there are future resistance. And 
now we're starting to go in and head towards the oversold region on the RSI. The MACD is not curling up just yet. It's still on a negative free fall with a negative momentum. But currently, it is around $6.14. These are different la layers of support. So we got the support at $6.18. We do have some support here at $5.95. Also, $4.05. Now, if it does bounce off of this, now you could open up something to kind of take you to this direction here uh, at $7.75. But you can see, uh, you know, it looks like it's more going down, down, you know, towards the downside. There is another level of uh, support at five dollars and sixty-two cents. Another one here at four dollars and seventy-seven cents, and then one right here at four dollars and five cents, going down here to three dollars and uh, um, thirteen cents. So. You can go ahead and play this and tire yourself out. But right now, you're in an opportunity where PayPal is down, TDoc is down, and Shopify is down, and so many other stocks are down right now. And you just got to ask yourself, I mean, is it really worth it right now playing with these stocks that are dangerous, that have a revenue going down to the ground? Um, so think about that. All right, let's answer some questions. Uh, just saw Wall Street bets people call out Big Short 2.0. You know, it could, it, you know, the market is overvalued right now. I don't know why I'm yawning right now. It's like, I have no idea. We're going to get more coffee. Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. Um, now, um, Scrubber, how did they get so much debt? Seems their overhead would be very limited being that. It's, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, it's really terrible management. It's terrible. I mean, th this screams to me terrible management. You know, you know what else screams to, screams to me terrible management? If you look up Twitter, I mean, just the revenues uh, have consistently gone up. Uh, the gross margins are okay. The net income still not so well. Free cash flow, all right. But if you look at the free cash flow started decreasing, and these past three years, no increase. So something, and that's why Elon's stepping in. And now he wants to triple the revenue by, or double, triple, whatever, by 20 something uh, in the next couple of years. My, my, my point being is sometimes as an investor, the, you know, our intrinsic value calculation, which we offer at the Mastering Stock Market course, you know, it does help. It keeps you, it, you know, it defends you from going through and buying a company that's crap. But at the same time, let's say if the numbers were good, you kind of have to sit back and kind of like, you know, I, I recommend going, taking a shower. I know this kind of sounds really weird. But go take a shower, um, go in a hot tub or go sit outside, go look at a sunset and just, or go to a hike and go look down at the mountains and see the beautiful part of your city and ask yourself, and be like, you know, I'm putting away my keyboard here. No, seriously, like, seriously, ask yourself and be like, do I see this company around in the future? Like, do I seriously see these companies? I mean, the only way I would see them possibly is in very low income areas that haven't made the transition to internet in their homes, which uh, possibly they still have DVD players or whatever, you know, but it seems with the Biden administration and all the laws that are being passed, at least locally in my area, uh, it seems that we're going to be giving broadband access to everyone, which I agree with 100%. And that was a heavy push when it came into uh, the 2020 pandemic. So I just don't see this business thriving um, in the current market condition. Now, was it smart back in the day to have it right there? Yeah, it's like a little vending machine for freaking movies. Yeah, of course. But you got so much competition. I mean, let's like, like what movies do you guys want to watch? I mean, here, let's look up the, the new Spider-Man movie. I'm sure that came out. Yeah, let's do this one. 2021. Let's look at all the watch options. You have Voodoo, which I honestly never heard of before. 
you have YouTube. We know YouTube, Apple Pay, Google, Amazon. There's just there's just so much, and then you do have Marvel, um, which is Disney, which is not on here. You, um, you know, so I I just there's just so much competition, guys. Now that this space is so it's a very difficult space to get into, and if you look up the Netflix stock, the Netflix stock has definitely felt that, and so I mean you know so just be careful when you when you purchase a company that, uh, uh, you know, just be careful because you're going to hear a lot of people trying to push the stock up. And it's a lot of the people that bought it at a very low price and they want to just see as much, you know, as much as they can. And what they do is they, you know, they have these, some of them have good technical indicators and they know when they get out, they have risk management skills. So just, you got to be careful as an investor and you got to take care of yourself. So just, you know, so I know that, we have this on our top short squeeze plays, but you got to do your due diligence. Yes, this is top one, but you got to understand that you you got to look at the risks as well and know what you're getting yourself into. And if you do see a setup on the technicals that is going to be positive, yeah, you know, but I would allocate, this is like, this is not even speculative at this point. Speculative is like, oh, you think there's going to be a success out of this. This is like pure gambling. I mean, I feel like gambling, at least you'll have fun. At least you're surrounded in a casino, you know, without, you know, just the smoke smell is tough, but you got, that's, that's how bad this, this company is at. So I think I drilled the point. Now, while you're here, don't forget to grab yourself some free stock from Weeble. Weeble's offering five, five free stocks. They usually do two. Now they're offering five and they extended it to the middle of May. So I definitely uh, would take advantage of this. I, uh, for some reason, can't copy it for you, but you're going to have to go down in the link down below once the video has ended, and uh, we can go ahead and do it up. Oh, there you go. I can copy it now. So uh, make sure you grab your five free stocks while you're here. And also, if you like my analysis and want access to all of our uh, AIs and uh, artificial intelligent technology. Like for example, if you want to see how much a uh, red box would cost from this calculator here, it's, it's, you know, it's around $6 and 54 cents. Um, and if you were to combine it with the technical analysis, it's around right here, which is kind of what we saw in this area right there, $6.54. So you could write it up from here to here. But again, it's why waste it? You know, why, why waste the headache? And just to answer your questions here, this used to be 28 bucks, But then you can see it just went kapoosh. Um, so um, if you do like the platform, uh, we do offer a three-day free trial. We've been featured on many of these amazing news outlets, Bloomberg, MarketWatch, NASDAQ. If you hit the three-day free trial, uh, you do get two months for free uh, off of the year, which is $10 a month. And here, if you would like to see some of our articles, like from the NASDAQ or Bloomberg, here's more about our program and why it's uh, – um, you know, what I believe it's a really fair price for everything that everyone, honestly, undervalued, to be honest. So if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, the link is down below or at alstocktrades.com. Other than that, it was a privilege and honor. Uh, I am trying to see if there's anything else, but that's it. Yeah. Uh, let me, I just one more question here. Maybe even 15 years before streaming got big. Yeah. 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 Way, way back in you know, 2010, 2008. Yeah, this was, it was more like the block. It was like a portable blockbuster. You know, you go to the market, pick out a movie, but those days are over. Uh, now you just have a TV. You got, we have an Apple TV here. You have a TV here. You click on it and you, there, there's your family movie. You know what I mean? This is like, it, it's the end, the final death sentence, the blockbuster pretty much. So, all right, guys. Uh, the only thing I like about Blockbuster is when Captain Marvel or Captain Marvel, when she flew in and crashed into the Blockbusters. That was really cool. Kind of gave back some good old memories. All right, guys. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, I'm going to have to set, I'm gonna set up the Clover Health uh, quarterly earnings. So that'll be fun. 
Oh, I'm so excited. All right. See you guys.